This is a follow-on video from the last one in the playlist and it's going to look at how we can build a graphical user interface using the frame widget. The principle behind frames is as follows. You get this idea of having a rectangular area of the screen and to it you add widgets and these widgets are contained by the frame and here you can see I'm creating another frame and then with respect to the window we move the frames into the window as you can see here. So we have a mechanism whereby we can group things collectively together based upon the logic of the solution for the graphical user interface. This line of code creates an instance of the frame class and if you look we are associating with the frame with this window which was created on this line. The name I'm giving to the frame is shown here and I've simply called it frame underscore name. If we consider what happens when this executes with respect to the memory associated with the runtime for this program. As shown here, we will see that within this memory we're going to have a frame created. And if you look, this is the frame and you can see it's bound to this name, which is the name we gave it within the program here. This line of code creates an instance of the label class and if you look at the options here you can see we set the text property to first name but if you look here you can see that that is the name of the frame which was created on this line. So this label will be associated with this frame. So this instance of the label class is going to be associated with this instance of the frame class. Now previously in the videos in this playlist, we showed widgets being associated with windows. But here, if you make sure you spot this, we're associating this label with this. And this is the name of the frame that was created on this line. If we now turn our attention to the memory, what we're going to see is this appear. And if you look at it, you can see that it's got the name label underscore first. And that's because that is the name that appeared here in the code. And if you look here where we said text is assigned first name, we can see that's what's going to be in the label as shown here. Now this line of code is also going to produce an instance of the label class in the computer's memory and we can see that instance appearing here. Likewise, this line of code is also going to produce an instance of the label class and that appears in the memory here. Now it's important that you note that this program statement has associated the label with this, which is the name of the frame that was created on this line. Likewise, this program statement is associated with the same frame as can be seen by this here. Now this line of code produces an instance of the entry widget and we can see that appearing here in the computer's memory. This is the entry widget and we can see that it has got this name in the code and if we look to the program statement we can see in brackets this and this is the name of the frame that was created on this line. So this widget here, this entry widget is associated with the frame and again in previous videos we showed the entry widget being associated directly to a window whereas here we're associating this widget with the frame that was created on this line. Now these two program statements also create instances of the entry widget and I can show those instances appearing here in the memory. There's the first one and there is the second one and if you look you can see both have been associated with the frame not the window. So both of these widgets are associated with this frame as we've created it on this line. Now this line of code creates an instance of the button class and if you look here you can see that that is the name of the frame that was created on this line. So this button is also associated with the same frame as the entry widget and the label widget. So if we look to the memory we can see that the button will appear in the computer's memory. Now all of these widgets have been associated with this frame widget. That means that they are going to be contained by the frame. But, and this is key, we have not yet positioned any of the widgets within the frame. What we're looking at with respect to the memory is the fact that we've created various instances of labels, entry widgets and a button widget. And that they have all been associated with this frame.
Let's now turn our attention away from the computer's memory and let's think of a region of the screen. And I'm going to use this here to represent the region of the screen. Where the region is the frame we're discussing in this program, i.e. frame underscore name. And if you look at this line, what we've got, we have got a message. And the message is going to be to this label. And of course, this label is this one in the memory. And if we have a look what's going to happen, we're going to invoke the grid method associated with this instance. And here you can see we're going to be placing the label in row 0, column 0. So if we look to the rectangular region of the screen represented by this, we can see that the label's going to appear here. If we go on to this line of code, well, we're going to be putting that in row 1 column 0 and consequently we'll see that label appearing here. Now this, well what it's going to do, it's now going to work with this label which we can see here in the memory and it is also going to invoke the grid method and we can see that it is going to place the label in row 2 column 0 and you can see that appears here. Now these three lines are all examples of messages and in all cases we're invoking the grid method and we're now going to be positioning this entry widget at row 0 column 1 so that's going to appear here this is going to make the next entry widget appear in row 1 column 1 which is here and this one is going to make the surname the entry surname widget appear at row 2 column 1 which is here these labels we can see are all in column 0 and different rows these entry widgets are all in column 1 and different rows and when I come on to this line of code what I'm going to be doing is invoking the grid method again associated with the button and you can see that I'm asking for the button to be placed in row 3 but I'm not specifying a column what I'm introducing here is something called column span and I'm making that equal to 2 now what that does it takes this region here which is row 3 and knows that previously we were having two columns and it effectively merges the two columns into one consequently the button is placed in the middle of these merged columns as you can see here so it's neither in column 0 or column 1 the columns have been merged and consequently the button effectively goes across both columns it spans both column 0 and column 1. The program on this slide has produced a frame and onto that frame it has placed three labels, three entry widgets and a button. If we were able to see that frame it would look like this and you can see it has got three labels, three entry widgets and a button. As it stands however this program will not allow us to see this frame. The reason being, if we look here when we created the instance of the frame, we associated it with this window which was created on this line. And we are yet to load the frame onto this window. Now the line of code responsible for showing the frame on the window is shown here. And you can see that I'm using the name of the frame, I'm using the grid method, and I'm saying that it should be placed at row 0, and column 0 but we must be clear here this is row 0 and column 0 of this window not of the frame so what we will see is that this will appear within the window in row 0 and column 0 of that window this is the segment of the program we've been considering so far in this video with the addition of this line which is the line that will be responsible for showing the frame within the window. So when this program segment executes, what we can expect to see is this. And here you can see the frame, and the frame has been placed in row 0, column 0, as represented by this bit of the code here. So we can see that these lines of codes have been associating all of the widgets with this frame. Whereas this line of code, we can see, has associated the frame with my window and consequently when we come to here and we use the grid method it's the grid method as applied to this window not the frame
At the beginning of this video I showed this schematic diagram where we took a frame, we created a frame and we added it to a window, we created another frame and we added that to the window. Now in this video I've shown how we created this frame and how we added this frame to the window. In the next video I'm going to carry on and show how we can create this frame and add it to the window as shown in this schematic diagram. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.